We're back in the theater with Brett Simmons, the composer for Changing Minds. Mr. Simmons, thank you for joining us today. I want to ask you a little bit about the Megan Mullally show that you worked on before Changing Minds and before this entire experience. It was before Changing Minds. It was. Yeah, I got a call out of the blue from Megan a few years back wanting to know if I would be interested in leading her band and mm -hmm. being her music director for a new talk show she was doing right after Will and Grace. In fact, she hadn't even finished Will and Grace oh, when that was already um, getting planned. And it was one of those bolts out of the blue you, that, that you always dream about getting. And, and in fact, I was with David. We were having dinner and we were working on a demo for another show mm -hmm. of ours. And that's how that happened. So how did you get into, because that's a, a, a huge transition into changing minds, how, how did you get into changing minds? Well, we had already been writing musical theater, and I've spent most of my mm -hmm. career writing that type of thing. I've worked for Disney for a million years, and, and, and we had been working on a show already. Um, in fact, that show was off-Broadway last, uh, last year in New York called mm -hmm. Falling for Eve. Mm -hmm. And um, then we had started uh, uh, working with Steve Spiegel. Right. And um, thought that it, w and thought, what can we do th mm -hmm. that would be something that's a little more youth oriented? And um, I've always been fascinated with this kind of a story, and David had that concept, and and so that's why we started playing around with it. What kind of uh, what kind of current music did you have to really listen to to get a feel for what you wanted these characters to sound? Well, like? Well, I, I wanted this to feel authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted if it was going to be a show about about teenagers, I wanted it to feel like and sound like what teenagers would actually be listening to mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. not, not a musical theater version of right. that, not a show tune, right. not a 70s rehash, mm -hmm. but something that would feel legitimate, that you could pull it out of the context of the show, and it might possibly be something that, that someone would cut, mm -hmm. something that would be on the radio. Mm -hmm. And so I, I live in LA, so I drive a lot. And so I, and I've always loved pop radio, so mm -hmm. I just really dug into the essence of what I thought. And I used to be, I used to write a lot of pop anyway, so it wasn't a big stretch for me. One of um, my absolute favorites is um, Suspicious, which is sung mm -hmm. by Ashley. And yeah. it's, it's so, it sounds like Lady Gaga and it sounds like mm -hmm. Beyonce. How did mm -hmm. you, where did the inspiration for that one come from? The inspiration for that, well, it really was Gaga because we wanted something that was going to be big mm -hmm. and and intense and showy and of course that's all the, mm -hmm, all, all things mm -hmm. Gaga are. and if you really dissect uh, Lady Gaga's music of course she's obviously very influenced by Madonna right okay she's very influenced by you will not believe well I have not read this but I believe sh she is if you listen to the chord structure and and of uh, ABBA of a yes. lot of, of a lot of yes. ABBA's things she's because she, she's very classical in mm -hmm. nature um, and so and I, I I, that, that appeals to me too, so um, that wasn't a big stretch for me. So just elaborate a little bit more for me on your collaboration with Mr. Howard. How did you guys come together with Mr. Spiegel as well and Mr. Bluestein to kind of plan this entire changing mind? Well, process? we had ta as, as David has, has mentioned, we talked, to, uh, we talked to Steve Spiegel and he was interested in, mm -hmm. in having us develop something that, that would work for the youth market. And so we, uh, we, st we got together and we, we started, we got the story together and started writing songs. It, it was a two or three year process mm -hmm. though. And we started with a few demos and um, then changed a few demos. <laughs> and then really, because we, we skewed it a little older at first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe college, college age. age mm -hmm. And Steve said, no. <laughs> and in fact, I think one of our first working titles was Gender Bender. And he's like, oh, no, 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 you can't go there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then with Identity Crisis, which I okay. liked, but mm -hmm. uh, we can't have the word crisis in the title. So uh, from there, we started working on it. And, we, and, and then you just start, you know, mm -hmm. how do you eat an elephant? You know, you mm -hmm. just got it one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. So you just start writing songs. Some of the, for, for example, the song you, you just mentioned that you love, that just happened a few months ago. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's a, it's a line, you throw things out and add new ones. I think a turning point in the show was when we decided to do a really good demo of all of the songs, mm -hmm. because these kind of songs, you can't get away with just playing on the piano and singing, because mm -hmm. almost everything sounds like a show tune. Right. If right. you play the piano and sing it. 
<laughs> so I knew we had to have authentic sounding things that acoustically sound right. They, mm -hmm. the, you know, your ears know if it, if mm -hmm. it, if it's current sounding or not. And that I op and then we sent that demo to Steve. And uh, I can't really use the words that he used when he called me five minutes later after he listened to it, but it was, he was very happy with it. Well, Mr. Simmons, we're out of time, but uh, it's been a pleasure to speak to you about the show. Absolutely. All right, well, we're going over to the choral room with Mr. Danielson to hear a another song from Changing Minds. 